that kept alive this quest for meaning, as it must in every age, is experience of beauty. And therefore, what I think is most important to begin in the study of philosophy, perhaps, is Brahms' piano concertos. Really, I read Brahms' piano concertos. To be exposed to the very best music, that's all. Very best. To go, to go, not to hear it on some machine, but to go in the presence of it. You see, don't listen to it. Don't build up a record collection. Go, be in the presence of it. Right? Because everything else is an echo. Beauty requires the presence. You have to be there. You have to be in its presence. Because that allows, in some strange way, the spirit of man to emerge and join it. And that sense of the presence and joining in it is nothing other than the Platonic idea of participation. Now look here. Participation is a curious word. See, it has the word part in it, and that's not, that's a wrong word for it. See, part, taking a part of something, that's, that's the wrong thing. Because the things you participate in the Platonic universe, you gain as a possession. It's a possession, it's not a participation, but I'll let that language go for a while. Now, to be in the presence, therefore, of beauty requires, therefore, I to be in its presence and therefore to, to be present at things that are the greatest, right? Especially Brahms' piano concertos, Beethoven's piano concerto, right? Great works of art. You have to be there. You have to get off your bottom and go. And never look at a good photograph or listen to a good record if you can help it. That's an echo. You have to give to the artist the opportunity, the opportunity to communicate beauty to you, see, to you. Not into a tape recorder, not into any kind of instrument for later use, but the artist needs you to be present so he can have your presence and through that presence participate in what it is that he is doing. Now, I just put a couple of ideas here on the board. You see, what is interesting about beauty is, and everybody knows this, everybody knows this, no degrees are required. <clears throat> no degrees are required. Everybody can play. Everybody can play, no exceptions, but there's a price, a psychic price. You have to be willing, you have to be willing to go through an initiation of discovery. It requires an initiation. You have to go through a period of initiation. And what I mean by initiation is the careful respect for something that you only have an intimation that it is really beautiful. But by the continued reflection and application, you gain, and this is what's most important about this concept of interpretation, pardon me, of the initiation, is that it then becomes clear that they are levels open to you. And these levels that are open to you in the experience of beauty, you realize have nothing, nothing at all to do with formal knowledge. Not that it doesn't, may not enhance it to some degree, but it has nothing to do with formal education. It has nothing to do with memory. It's not totally a memory, though memory is very important for it, because to be able to anticipate it and proceed with it <clears throat> is obviously an important element. What is important, however, is that you recognize that you yourself have to be in a certain state to proceed more deeply. Right. 
that you yourself, see that's the price, not everybody can pay the price. You have to prepare. You have to psychically, whatever that means, right? Psychically, whatever that means, solely, right through the soul, through the mind. You have to be in such a position where you can receive a sense of kind of a quiet participation, really enter into a silence, right? Enter a kind of a silence, receptive silence. Because to that degree, then, you can allow in that state an anticipation of something good. And I'll change that, an anticipation of something good, to an anticipation of goodness. Now, I'm going to use that word quite a bit in a short while. So therefore, you recognize that at first you may find these different kinds of things a little strange, though you may have, it must have an intimation of its beauty. And then by continual application to it, reflection on it, you then discover that you can get into it more profoundly. The more you're familiar with it, the more you become attuned to it, participate in it. And then it requires from you a certain psychic state of mind where you have to be receptive and open to something that intrinsically has a goodness about it. Not because it's going to give you something or change you in some physical way, but the experience itself has a kind of goodness because the goodness it possesses is an indication and a acceptance that there is in the very nature of our reality something called beauty and in that recognition you know that you're living in and participating in a meaningful universe an intelligible universe because to the degree that beauty increases in its depth for the experiencer to that very degree to that very degree <clears throat> you can say that it becomes intelligible now that's a strange word so we have two key strange words we're going to play with, right? Goodness and intelligible, especially in the higher reaches of such experiences as beauty. Well then, look here. See whether this is true. You see, you can evolve a language to reflect together so long as you're with people who are willing to talk about beauty. A natural language emerges that language becomes the very language to explore philosophy. That's why it's important. Let's try it, see? Is it not true that when you experience anything that you regard as beautiful, and reflect, come on, reflect, are you not delighted when you see that beauty? Does it awaken in you signs of kinship? Like there's something akin to whatever it is that's being experienced that you're drawn to because it shows signs of kinship to yourself. Uh-oh, that's dangerous. That means the continued exposure to beauty has to awaken in you a challenge to challenge to understand yourself more profoundly. That's it. Because in that experience of beauty, there is that sense of kinship that awakens the very idea, right, that there's something more profound going on. That's the promise.